Hello everyone, this is Dr. Zaidi. Welcome to my YouTube channel, ZTube. In this video, I'll be discussing about cost and cost classifications. So let's discuss the cost and the purpose of cost. The first thing you need to know before we proceed to the cost purposes and the classification of cost is the cost object. That's the most important thing. What is the cost object? Cost object is anything you're trying to associate a cost with or anything you're trying to find out a cost of. So if you're trying to find out a cost of a pen, a pen is a cost object. If you're trying to find out a cost of a, a laptop, it's a cost object. If you're trying to find out a cost of uh, um, the manufacturing plant, then the plant is a cost object. If you're trying to find out a cost of a supervisor, cost to hire a supervisor, then supervisor itself is a cost object. If you're trying to find out a cost of a department, then the department is a cost object. If you're trying to find out a cost of a particular product, the product is a cost object. If you're trying to uh, find out a cost of a particular service, that um, you're providing, for example, an oil change, then that's a cost object. If you're trying to find out a cost of hiring a president, then president is the cost object. So cost object is not necessarily a product, is anything you're trying to associate a cost with, right? You're trying to calculate a cost of um, producing something. You're trying to calculate a cost of hiring a worker. So cost object can be anything. So you need to understand. And once you know what is the cost object, then you can uh, come up with the classification, the other classifications of the cost. So what is the main purpose of the cost classification? The purpose of the cost classification is, assign, is to assign cost to cost objects, right? Once you know that, and whether the cost is variable and fixed, and that's another topic of discussion, variable and fixed, um, whether the cost is direct or indirect, that's again another topic of discussion, direct and indirect then you can allocate the cost or assign a cost to the cost objects, right? Um, also another purpose of uh, assigning, uh, purpose of cost classification is to assign a cost in the manufacturing companies or calculating a cost in the manufacturing companies. You can also use um, cost classification to prepare financial statements or budgeted financial statement, budgeted income statement, budgeted balance sheet, budgeted cash flow statement. Um, cost classification is also used to predict cost behavior in response to changes in the level of activity. So if um, you drive more miles, how the cost is going to behave. The more miles you drive, the more gas you're going to consume, the more gas you're going to consume, um, the more uh, dollar amount you have to spend to buy the gasoline, right? So that's the predicting the cost behavior, how the cost behave in response to the changes of activity level the more units you produce, the higher is gonna be your cost, right? Whether the cost is changing or not. So that's another purpose of cost classification. And then finally making decision. So these are some of the purposes of uh, the cost classification. Now um, let's do cost classification for assigning cost to cost objects based on direct and indirect cost. Now, when we assign costs to cost objects, right? When you assign direct cost is known as the cost tracing. When you assign indirect cost, it's known as the cost allocation. Indirect costs are allocated, direct costs are traced, right? But together it's called cost assignment. So direct or indirect cost, they are both assigned to cost object. However, again, the direct costs are traced whereas indirect costs are allocated. So what is the difference between the direct cost and indirect cost? The direct costs are easily traceable or you can also say conveniently traceable. It is cost effective to trace to a particular cost object or it is a significant portion of a product, right? So if the cost is a significant portion of the product, if it's cost effective to trace it to a particular product, if it's easily traceable or conveniently traceable to the product, then it is classified as a direct cost. However, on the other hand, 
if it is not traceable or you can say if it is not easily traceable or if it is not conveniently traceable it is not cost effective to trace it to uh, the particular product or if it's not a significant portion of the product then you allocate it to the product and then it's known as the indirect cost so all the indirect costs are allocated because they are not traceable right it's still known as assignment cost assigned whether it's direct or indirect but direct costs are traced and indirect costs are allocated so what kind of cost can be direct or indirect let's take an example of a vehicle right you are manufacturing a car now the direct cost can be wheels right seats engine transmission steering wheel so anything that is a significant portion of the car easily traceable countable convenient to trace is cost effective to trace it doesn't it, it does not consume significant resources when you trace it then it's a direct cost indirect cost can be if you're using a lubricant um, to or uh, or a grease um, so the wheels and engine can move smoothly. Now, those grease and lubricants are not a significant portion of the cost, right? They are not easily traceable or it's not cost effective to trace. Even if you can trace, it's not cost effective to trace. You will consume more resources to trace it than it's worth it. Then what you can do is you can allocate, you can put those costs into overhead and allocate it to a cost object. So these kind of costs are known as indirect costs. I can, I can give you another example of this. If you are making a table, now the formica and the piece of wood could be considered as a direct cost because it's a tra easily traceable, it's cost effective to trace, it's conveniently traceable, it's a significant portion of making a table, both pieces of wood or um, the piece of formica. However, if you're using a glue to stick formica to a particular piece of wood, you're using um, some small nails, then it's not easily traceable or it's not cost effective to trace or if it's not an, or it's not a significant portion of a product, then it can be classified as indirect cost. So that's the easy way to distinguish between direct and indirect cost is if it's cost effective, to trace, easily traceable, conveniently, conveniently traceable, significant portion of the product or not. And then you make decision based on that. Now, the cost classifications for manufacturing companies. You know, manufacturing companies are the most sophisticated companies. That's why we discuss manufacturing companies, right? In other companies like merchandising companies, we don't have material, we don't have raw material and direct labor and manufacturing overhead. Um, we have a merchandising, um, uh, we have merchandise. Or in the service industry, again, we don't have a product, we have a service that we provide. Whereas in the manufacturing companies, you have a work in process inventories, you have a raw material inventory, you have a finished goods inventory, you have a several kinds of inventories and different kind of overheads and um, labor and materials. So that makes uh, manufacturing companies more complicated. Now in a manufacturing companies, when you manufacture a product, right? And that And the cost you incur to make that product is known as manufacturing cost. You can also call it as a product cost. You can also call it as an inventoryable cost because it goes into balance sheet as an inventory, right? So manufacturing cost, product cost, inventoryable costs are the same thing. Now, manufacturing costs consist of direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. So in the previous slide, we discussed the direct and indirect costs. Direct cost was easily traceable, indirect cost was not easily traceable. So if you look at the slide, the direct material and direct labor are the direct manufacturing costs. Those are direct costs. Whereas manufacturing over has, uh, is, is indirect manufacturing cost. So that means man, in manufacturing overhead cost, we assign, we allocate cost in manufacturing overhead. Whereas direct material and direct labor is easily traced 
conveniently traced to a particular product. Now, so direct material in the example of car, I gave you the example that um, uh, the wheel, a steering wheel, engine, transmission, those are the direct material. Now direct labor is someone who is directly working on making the product. So if labor is working on manufacturing engine, that's a direct labor. If uh, someone is installing the seats, then that's a direct labor. Um, if someone is assembling um, the vehicle, then that's a direct labor. However, if a supervisor is monitoring the labor, that's not considered as a direct labor because the supervisor is monitoring, is not directly working on a specific product. So the supervisor is considered as an indirect labor and indirect labor goes into manufacturing overhead, just like the indirect material. So if it's a glue, if it's a nails, um, if it's a lubricant, if it's a grease, those items th those are that are not significant portion of the product, not cost effective to trace, not easily traceable, um, right? Or conveniently traceable, then it goes into manufacturing overhead. So those are indirect material. And manufacturing overhead, again, is also known as factory overhead. FOH or MOH is same thing, okay? They are not two different things. You can call it MOH, manufacturing overhead, or FOH, factory overhead. So indirect material and indirect labor goes to manufacturing overhead. Then you have other factory overhead. So anything else like utilities, you know, telephone bill, um, electricity bill, um, any other water bill, any other utility that you use in the factory is, it goes into the other factory overhead. Property tax goes into the factory overhead. The depreciation on the factory goes into the other factory overhead. So if you see the direct material is all variable, the more material you use, the more cost you're going to incur, right? Direct labor is variable. The more labor you're going to use, the more cost you're going to incur. Whereas manufacturing overhead has both variable and fixed account, right? So indirect material is variable, more indirect material you use, more cost you're going to incur. Indirect labor is again variable. Uh, it can be variable, it can be fixed, right? So if it's a, uh, if, a, if the supervisor in, is on wages, then maybe, maybe you can consider that as an indirect labor. If it's, if it's on salary, then it's a, um, it's a fixed cost, right? If it's a security guard, security guard of a factory building, security guard of a manufacturing plant is also considered as an indirect labor. Anyone who is working in a factory premises is considered as an indirect labor if it's not work, if he or she is not working on making a product. So security guard or janitorial uh, labor that's working in the factory building can be considered as an indirect labor, or even supervisor. And the other factory overhead has some fixed item and some uh, variable items. So utilities are variable. The more you use, the more you're going to incur. Uh, property tax can be fixed, depreciation can be fixed. So you, you can see that the manufacturing overhead has both variable and fixed item. Now, non-manufacturing cost is also known as period cost. Period costs are what? Selling and admin expenses, right? Period costs are the cost that goes into your income statement as a period cost, uh, as a selling and admin cost or period expenses or non-manufacturing cost or operating expenses, also known as operating expenses, right? So selling costs and administrative costs are non-manufacturing costs. Selling costs include sales commission, that's the selling cost. Um, advertising costs can be considered as a selling cost too. Now it can be variable and fixed. If advertising is fixed, you know, you can consider it as a fixed selling cost. If sales commission is variable, then you can consider it as a variable selling cost, right? Administrative cost, administrative cost, CEO salary can be a, um, administrative cost. If it's a, um, if you have a office building, the head office building cost, any cost associated with this is also administrative cost, the HR cost. Now there, again, this can be variable and fixed. If CEO salary is fixed, it's a, uh, a fixed cost. If it's variable, um, you know, other workers, or janitors working there, um, and, you know, on the wedges in the 
not in the factory building, in the office premises, in the head office, then can be considered as a variable administrative cost. So again, if it's a depreciation on factory building, this is a manufacturing overhead. If there is a depreciation in the office, on the office building, then it's not considered as a factory overhead because the depreciation is not on the manufacturing building, on the manufacturing plant, it is on the office building, right? If, um, if it's a supervisor that's working in the office, in the head office, then it's not considered as a manufacturing um, overhead. So anything that has nothing to do with a particular manufacturing facility or a plant that can be considered as a uh, non-manufacturing cost or a period cost or the operating expenses. Next is prime and conversion cost. So the prime cost is the primary cost of the product. What is the primary cost? Is the direct cost of the product, direct labor and direct material. Those two things make prime cost, direct material and direct labor. Whereas conversion cost is the cost that you incur to convert direct material into the finished goods. What is the cost you incur to convert direct material into finished goods? You incur labor and you incur manufacturing overhead. So direct labor plus manufacturing overhead is considered as a conversion cost. So conversion cost um, has both direct and indirect component, direct labor and MOH, which is indirect whereas prime cost has both direct components, direct material and direct labor. Product versus period cost. We discussed this when we discussed this slide right here, the cost classification for manufacturing companies. So the product costs are the manufacturing costs, inventoriable costs or um, the, or the, or the uh, manufacturing cost. And uh, the non-manufacturing cost is known as period cost or operating expenses or operating cost. So product cost goes into balance sheet as an inventoriable cost until the product is sold. Once the product is sold, it becomes an expense of the period, cost of goods sold, right? Cost of goods sold is an expense account. It becomes the expense and then it ends up in the income, expense, income statement, right? So product cost, is an inventoriable cost. First, it goes into your balance sheet, and once the product is sold, you uh, move it to uh, move it into the income statement. Whereas the period cost, period costs are expensed directly in the income statement. Selling and administrative expenses are the example of the period cost. All the operating expenses they are expensed in the uh, income statement. Thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe my channel for live updates.